Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on AIST QB AI Tester Certification. We are in chapter 8 talking about testing AI specific quality characteristics and continuing ahead with the next segment which is 8.3 how to test for algorithmic sample and inappropriate bias. Well, to particularly talk about these three things, we need to understand a little more from the recollation of the chapter one. If in case you have forgotten by now what exactly we are referring to, you can always go back to the chapter one quickly to recap that. What are we referring to when we say about algorithmic sample and inappropriate biases? So when it comes to an ML system, it should be evaluated against the different biases and the actions taken to remove inappropriate biases. The biases here are being uh, referred to as what is the difference between the expected and the out, uh, actual outcome. This may in, involve positive bias being deliberately introduced to counter the inappropriate bias as well. Now testing with an, indi with an independent data set can often detect biases because generally when you are using the same set of data what you have used for training it may reflect something very very precise and appropriate but as soon as you change the data compared to the training data sets, it may give you the real biases. So it can be difficult to identify all the data that can cause bias because the ML algorithm can use combinations of seemingly unrelated features to create unwanted biases. There are no end, there are no defined set of information that, hey, these are some of the standard scenarios, these are some of the standard data sets which you can use in a particular segment to identify the biases because it could be anything it could be distinct it can be it could be unique to that particular you know sort of algorithm so it's very difficult and challenging to identify the right set of data which can be used to identify these inappropriate biases now ai based systems should be tested for algorithmic bias sample bias and inappropriate bias which we have discussed in 2.4 now this may involve the following number 1 an analysis during the model's training, evaluation, and tuning activities to identify whether algorithmic bias is present. So right in the workflow, when we talk about the algorithmic definitions, which is, of course, model's training, evaluation, tuning, it will help you to find algorithmic biases right at that point of time. So it's much earlier than the testing which happens for an ML model. Second, reviewing the source of the training data and the processes used to acquire it, such that the presence of sample bias can be identified. And of course, the source of training data is very, very particular because we have discussed several times in past that how exactly did you gather those data set is very important because it can be outdated data, it could be irrelevant data, it could be repeated data. So we need to be very, very curious that from uh, what is the source and how relevant that data is all about. Reviewing the pre-processing of data as part of the ML workflow to identify whether the data has been affected in a way that could cause the sample bias. So pre-processing also contributes uh, to the overall understanding of how exactly the data will be reflecting the right outputs, right? So we have covered the, you know, the previous chapters about how exactly do we take care of the preparation of data and processing, etc. That certainly helps us to build all together that how exactly sample biases can be identified. Well, further to add on this, uh, we are talking about measuring how changes in the system inputs affect system outputs over a large number of interactions and examining the results based on the groups of people or object that the system may be inappropriately biased towards or against. This is similar to LIME, which stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations method, which will be discussed in the 8.6, which is coming up soon, and may be carried out in the production environment, as well as part of the testing prior to release. So there are certainly talking about the measurements on the uh, large number of interactions, which happens based on the changes in the system inputs, right? And that certainly affects the output. So we may have inappropriate biases towards such things. So if you want to relate this to, you know, back to your self-learning and autonomous too, you can correlate these information very well there because they keep collecting a lot of information on their own and keep learning uh, to perform better. 
Now these information, like if you tweak a little bit in the input, does it drastically change the difference in the output or not? Because if a slight tweaking which happens in the input data, it should not drastically reflect the output in a different manner. So this is where it, this goes completely in line with understanding how exactly these tweaking, how exactly these differences can be identified much before the ML model goes into the live market. Anyways, obtaining a additional information concerning the attributes of the input data potentially related to bias and correlating it to the results. This could relate to demographic data, for example, which might be appropriate when testing for inappropriate biases, which is like kind of like your false positive and false negative that affects a group of people where membership of a group is relevant to assessing bias but is not an input to the model. This is because the bias can be based on hidden variable which are not explicitly present in the input data but are inferred by the algorithm. So here we are talking about the such data which basically uh, are relative to some of the people or in a group of the group of the people who certainly expect some of the different you know outputs based on their input. So for example, if I'm talking about the language, right? Uh, language is something which is unique, particular to Jones. For example, if I'm talking about German, you know, Chinese, Korean, etc., then certainly these languages are unique and they have a different output. So translation, if AI based system is trying to translate a particular given statement from English to German, then what is the accuracy level of it? If in case the system is incapable of converting and understanding what the English statement said and what is the right conversion of that in the German, it could create an inappropriate bias only for German people, whereas it may not have any problem for any other languages. So it just depends that how exactly your information is being, you know, feed it in and could be related to any such information which could be having inappropriate biases for you know, certain group of people, but not necessarily for everyone. Anyway, so that was a quick topic to talk about how do you test for algorithmic sample and inappropriate biases, which gives us all the understanding what we have to take care of. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.